After studying this module, we shall be able to understand the process of learning, learn the meaning and components of learning, explain and evaluate the various theories of learning, differentiate between classical conditioning and operant conditioning, analyze the mechanism for using reinforcement of learning. Learning has unlimited value for enriching personal, social and economic life of all humans. Learning is involved in every field of organizational behavior, be it developing new occupational skills or changing the system or processes to do a job or supervising employees in such a way that nurtures the greatest productivity. To be more productive and profitable, a company must nurture an environment in which the employees are able to learn. All actions and behaviors that make human life peaceful and pleasurable are learned. Learning is a dominant motivation for many employees to remain loyal to their organizations. Learning has a substantial bearing on individual behavior as it impacts abilities, role perceptions and motivation. Therefore, understanding the process of learning, both how it occurs and how it may be applied to the effective functioning of organizations is extremely important. Learning is defined as a relatively permanent change in behavior or behavior tendency taking place as a result of past knowledge. The process of learning has some important characteristics which are change. Learning involves change which may be for good or bad. Change may not be evident until a situation arises in which the new behavior can occur. Permanent. Not all changes constitute learning. Learning involves only those changes which are relatively permanent. Temporary changes may only be reflective and fail to represent any learning. Therefore, behavioral changes caused by other factors such as growing up or maturation in children, aging in adults, drugs, alcohol and fatigue do not constitute learning. For example, when, whenever one has taken a sedative or drug or alcohol, one's behavior changes. Each one of these drugs affects physiological functions leading to certain behavior changes. Such changes are temporary in nature and vanish as the effect of the drugs wear out. Behavior. Learning is revealed in behavior, simply a change in an individual's thought process or approach not accompanied by behavior is no learning. The aim for this differentiation is that an individual may learn but owing to lack of motivation may not display any changed behavior. Experience, practice or training. The change in behavior should take place as a consequence of experience, practice or training. This implies that change in behavior caused from maturity, disease or physical damages does not constitute learning. Inferential. Learning is inferential. It cannot be observed directly. We can only observe a person's behavior and draw the conclusion from it that learning has taken place. It is interesting to note that contrary to accepted principle, learning is not limited to one's schooling. Learning occurs throughout one's life. Classical conditioning is a theory of learning that influenced the school of thought, behaviorism in psychology. This theory is based on the principle that an event, termed a stimulus, that initially does not extract a particular response, slowly acquires the power to extract that response as a consequence of repetitive combination with a stimulus that extracts a reaction. 
This type of learning is rather frequent and plays a critical role in such reactions as taste aversions, strong fears, even racial or ethnic prejudice and some aspects of sexual behavior. The first model, classical conditioning, was initially identified by Pavlov in the salivation reflex of dogs. When Pavlov presented a meat to the dog in the experiment, Pavlov noticed a great deal of salivation. He termed the food an unconditioned stimulus and the salivation an unconditioned response. When the dog saw the meat, it salivated. Pavlov subsequently introduced the sound of a bell each time the meat was given to the dog. The dog eventually learned to salivate in response to the ringing of the bell even when there was no meat. Pavlov had conditioned the dog to respond to a learned stimulus. Despite the theoretical extensive applicability of classical conditioning, Skinner felt that it signifies only a very small part of total human learning. Classical conditioning explains only respondent reflexive behaviors. These are involuntary responses that are obtained by a stimulus. Skinner felt that the more complex human behaviors cannot be explained by classical conditioning alone. The learning of these complex behaviors can be explained or better understood by looking at operant conditioning. Operant conditioning, also called instrumental conditioning, refers to the process that our behaviors produce certain consequences. If our actions have satisfying effects, we are less likely to repeat them in the future. Thus, according to this theory, behavior is the function of its consequences. The famous Skinner ex box experiment confirmed operant conditioning by placing a rat in a box in which the pressing of a small bar produces food. Skinner illustrated that the rat ultimately learns to press the bar regularly to obtain food. Besides reinforcement, punishment creates escaping behavior, due to which learning weakens but doesn't stop. In both classical and operant conditioning, stimulus generalization happens. That is, the conditioning reaction is extracted by stimuli like the original conditioned stimulus but not used in the original training. Stimulus generalization has vast importance as it lets the application of learned behaviors across the different contexts happen. These stimulus response models of learning produce a type of treatment known as behavior modification. The assumption underlying is that if behavior can be learned, it can also be unlearned. Operant conditioning is a voluntary behavior and is determined, sustained and controlled by its consequences. Operant conditioning is a dominant method for influencing the behavior of people in organizations. Most behaviors in organizations are learned, controlled and altered by the consequence, that is operant behaviors. Management can use the operant conditioning process successfully to control and influence the behavior of employees by manipulating its reward system. For example, it might be said that employees work in organizations to earn a living for themselves and their families. Working is instrumental only in obtaining food, clothing and shelter. Some substantial understandings can be gained directly from this kind of analysis. Managers can analyze consequences of organizational behavior to help accomplish the goals of prediction and control. Contemporary researchers' viewpoint about learning is that it is a cognitive process. It means they assume that people take active, conscious participation in how they learn. Cognitive learning can be defined as the process by which people acquire knowledge or skill in cognitive processes. Cognitive processes include reasoning, abstract thinking, decision making, problem solving, etc. In cognitive learning, 
the individual learns by watching, reading or experiencing some stimuli. This information is processed by the brain and later recalled. Wolfgang Kohler exhibited that extended practice of trial and error may be substituted by an abrupt understanding that comprehends the interrelationships of a problem. This process called insight is more like piecing together a puzzle than responding to a stimulus. Edward Tolman 1930 suggested that unrewarded rats learned the layout of a maze, yet it was not apparent until they were later rewarded with food. Tolman called this latent learning and it has been suggested that the rats develop cognitive maps of the maze that were able to apply immediately when reward was offered. The cognitive theory of learning is relevant in the contemporary managerial practices. Many motivation theories center on the concept of cognition. Expectations, attributions and locals of control are all cognitive concepts requiring attention while motivating employees. Social learning theory, also called observational learning, highlights that people can learn through observing others and direct experience. The influence of models is central to social learning. The important models may include parents, teachers, peers, motion pictures, TV artists, bosses and others. People obtain new knowledge by observing what happens to their model. This is generally known as vicarious learning. The vicarious processes essentially involve observational learning. Learning does not result from discrete stimulus response consequence connections. Instead, learning can take place through imitating others. Vicarious learning occurs when a person becomes motivated to perform a behavior by watching other person perform the behavior and may be positively reinforced for doing so. Social learning has substantial applicability in organizational behavior. In organizations, whatever is learned, a great amount of that can be explained as the outcome of the process of observational learning. A new employee learns job skills by observing what an experienced senior employee does. Social learning increases self-efficiency because people gain greater self-confidence after observing someone else do it than if they are simply told what to do. Also, observational learning happens in a very informal, implicit style. For instance, people who experience the norms and traditions of their organizations and who subsequently incorporate these into their own behavior may be recognized as having learned through observation. Social learning has importance in organization because it improves the self-efficacy of the employee. Self-efficiency refers to a person's belief that he or she has the ability, motivation and situational contingencies to complete a task successfully. People strong in self-efficiency have a can-do attitude towards a specific task and more generally with other challenges in life. Managers can shape employee behavior by systematically reinforcing each successive step that moves the individual closer to the desired response. If an employee, for example, who has been chronically a half an hour late for work comes in only 20 minutes late, the boss can reinforce that improvement. Reinforcement is the attempt to develop or strengthen desirable behavior. It can be defined as something which improves the strength of response and tends to encourage repetitions of the behavior that preceded the reinforcement. Some learning theorists, however, consider that learning does not involve reinforcement. 
For example, Mendick comments that all that is necessary for an association to develop between a stimulus and a response is that they other occur together frequently. The reward does not seem to be necessary. However, when a reward is used, conditioning proceeds far more rapidly and with great vigor. This advocates that reinforcement is not necessary for learning. However, its presence increases the learning. Positive reinforcement may be classified as primary reinforcers and secondary reinforcers. Primary reinforcers satisfy basic physiological needs and include food, water, etc. However, primary reinforcers do not always reinforce. For instance, food may not be a reinforcer to someone who has just completed a large meal. Most behaviors in organizations are influenced by secondary reinforcers. These include such benefits as money, status, grades, trophies and praise from others. Regardless of whether positive reinforcement is primary or secondary in nature, once it has been determined that the consequence has reward value to the employees, it can be used to increase their performance. It is to be noted that an event that acts as a positive reinforcement at one time or in one situation may have a different effect at another time or in another place. Clearly, a stimulus that functions as a positive reinforcer for one person may fail to operate in a similar manner for another. Positive reinforcement has several principles. The principle of contingent reinforcement says that the reinforcer must be given only if the desired behavior has occurred. A reinforcer given when the desired behavior has not been performed becomes futile. The principle of reinforcement says that the larger the amount of reinforcement given after the desired in negative reinforcement, an unpleasant event that leads a behavior is removed when the desired behavior follows. This process increases the likelihood that the desired behavior will occur. Thus, when we do an action that allows us to avoid a negative reinforcer that is already present, our tendency to perform this action in future increases. Some negative reinforcers such as intense heat, extreme cold or electric shock exert their effects the first time they are encountered, whereas other acquires their impact through repeated association. Negative reinforcement is found in organizations and in personal life. In organizations, supervisors use negative reinforcement when they stop condemning employees whose poor performance has improved. By withholding the criticism, employees are more likely to repeat behaviors that improve their performance. Thus, both positive and negative reinforcement are producers that strengthen or increase behavior. Positive reinforcement strengthens and increases behavior by the presentation of desirable consequences. Negative reinforcement strengthens and increases behavior by the threat of and the use of an undesirable consequences or the termination or withdrawal of a desirable consequence. Negative reinforcement is sometimes confused with punishment because both use unpleasant stimuli to influence behavior. However, negative reinforcement is used to increase the frequency of desired behavior, whereas punishment is used to decrease the frequency of undesired behavior. Reinforcement, positive or negative, needs to be properly scheduled. The pattern and timing of rewards for desired behavior is known as the schedule of reinforcement. A schedule of reinforcement establishes the pattern and frequency of rewards contingent on the display of desirable behavior. Schedule of reinforcement determines when reinforcers are applied. Researchers have recognized several different schedules of reinforcement.